Interesting night to have that meeting. Here it is, the, really it is. The, the official start of the college basketball season, and Jim Calhoun is not with his team because he is discussing these issues, and we'll see where the NCAA falls on all of that. There is madness all over the country, a lot more celebration going on all over the country, and we want to get you caught up with what's going on out in the great Northwest. It's Spokane as Gonzaga trying to get it rolling again this year as the Zags. Are they still the team to beat out West? And welcome back to the McCarthy Athletic Center. Midnight Madness. Uh, Gonzaga calling it craziness in the kennel this year. And, of course, the scrimmage is underway. And Sam Dower, Rob Sacker, it's Dower who wins the tip. Well, you know, and it really, when you look at a scrimmage like this, what can we expect to see? <laughs> well, we expect to see a lot of fun between these yes. two guys. Mark Few said it the, the best when he spoke to the uh, crowd. He said, look, this is for you and this is for our guys to have fun. We'll get after it and coach tomorrow. But still, these guys are so excited just to be out on the court having the opportunity to play basketball. Now, you didn't have a Midnight Madness experience as a player, but you certainly had the first scrimmage or the first practice of the season back at your days at UCLA. What's it like? Well, you know, the, you get those butterflies in your stomach because you're so excited after all the off-season workouts with the coaches, uh, the time in the weight room, out on the track, trying to prepare to get ready for the season. To finally get to play with the basketball in your hand, have some life in the arena, the crowd around you, those are the type of things that you try to... You try to put yourself in that kind of mode mentally in order to be successful when the season begins. And college basketball fans who will watch Gonzaga this year are going to see what? What are they going to do really well? What makes them competitive this year on a national level? Well, you see it right there. It's their front court strength. They're so long, so athletic around the rim. They really can dominate a majority of their opponents down in the paint. And, of course, Mark Few, the intangibles in which he brings outside of just the X's and O's aspect of it, the ability to read his team and understand what buttons to push and how to push them, and then this community. You mentioned it off the top, how successful they've been inside this building. They've only lost four games since it opened, 75 and four so far on this court. They've got an awfully difficult schedule coming up this year, but these fans come out and rally and make it a very unique env environment in college basketball. And as a coach, you've got to be able to lean on players. You see Stephen Gray there. They're going to have to lean on Elias Harris, who really broke onto the scene a year ago as a young player. He's older than the other freshman a year ago, but this guy could be a superstar at Gonzaga. And when I spoke with Elias last week, I asked him specifically about his offseason workouts. Well, what, what did you focus on? He said, look, there's a couple things. Footwork. I've got to improve my footwork this year. I've got to improve my range and the consistency I have from the outside. And then the other aspect of it is play to your strengths. And I think that's one of the big keys for him because he hears all the talk, the NBA talk that's yep. out there around him. If he's going to be at the next level, he projects out to be a three. He played a lot of four a year ago here. He'll play both positions, but I hope he doesn't get away from his strengths because he is very good when he gets a piece of the paint, uses his back to the basket, and uses his speed and athleticism to get to the rim. Now, I think when we talk about replacing players, and obviously they lose Matt Bolden to graduation 16 points a game, and those may be tough to recover from, but it's all the intangibles that that player had a year ago from Mark Q. How does he replace those? Collectively, because I don't think there's a player on the roster right now that can assume all that Matt Bolden brought to the table. And, and again, when I spoke with Matt earlier this week, and he just signed over in Greece. He's playing professionally over there. I asked him about replacing him, and he talked about each one of the guards that are in this system right now and how they could step up individually. And, and one of the things he pointed out is you can't replace any player. It doesn't matter if it was a Blake Step that came through this program, a Dan Dickow, all the great players that are Casey Calvary that have come through here. You've got to do it as a collective group and unit, and this team does have that. The question, though, clearly is at the point guard position. How good are the point guards on this team? We know how good they've been in the past with that guy. Sean Stockton. That is right on cue. I mean, one of the 50 greatest basketball players to ever play the game at any level. They don't have a pure point guard right now that can play at that level at this point in time. But I think Marquise Carter is a guy that could really assume that role. He's a great scorer, the J.C. transfer. He's a guy that dropped 35 in the Junior College National Championship a year ago. But I think he needs to learn how to play at two speeds. He needs to learn how to play inside this system and understand the structure that Marquise asked out of his guard.
And along with uh, with Carter, look, let's look at the other newcomers for, for head coach Mark Few. There's Carter, the junior guard, the, the junior college transfer. You can see the others, but let's talk about Carter quickly. Now, he's a junior college transfer. It's going to take some time for him to learn this system, to learn to play within a system, and to get comfortable with Gonzaga. I always say two speeds. You know, it's great to have a guy go 100% at all times, but you got to learn how to downshift occasionally and learn how to pull the back up, fall out, establish your offense, and try to figure it out. I'm really excited to see Keegan Highland, by the way, yeah. get an opportunity to play. This is a guy that only played in three games as a senior a year ago because of a stress fracture to his pelvic bone. But he adds a dimension that Gonzaga hasn't had in a while, and that's perimeter shooting. And this is a guy that, especially on out-of-bounds underneath, can be so dangerous for what Gonzaga is trying to accomplish this year. Also uh, joining the team this year is Matisse Kaida and Mattis Mooninghoff. A young man from France in Kaida, a young man from Germany in, in Mooninghoff, a lot of new players, but a lot of new cultures, new languages. There's a lot that goes with recruiting foreign born players. Well, and one of the things that Mark Few told us was that, you know, sometimes you recruit a kid here, they might have a chip on their shoulder, you know, uh, how they view a program, whether it's nationally or within your state. You go internationally, these guys are excited about the opportunity to come play big time Division One basketball, and that is exactly what Gonzaga has done, is they've been able to go international and bring in guys, and we take a look at all of these guys, they've all had success already at some certain level, junior national teams, national teams playing at the World Championships. That kind of experience helps to translate over to Division One college basketball. And the players that we haven't talked about on that list right there, Manny Arap from a year ago, and as, as, long, as well as uh, Kelly Olenek. Both sophomores now, both Canadians, but both have settled in here in Spokane, and both will be looked to to have an impact this year. Olenek is really coming off of a high. I mean, this is a guy that really played well over the course of the summer with Team Canada. And, and Mark, you said that he's got to try to bottle up that kind of energy and that kind of feeling that he has right now and try to maintain it over the long haul of the season because, you know, one of the X factors for this team is if Harris is going to slide up to the three, who's going to step into the four? It's going to be Kelly. He's going to have the opportunity to play down there, but at seven feet tall, the ability to shoot the three, he can cause a lot of mismatches for any team. He's the son of a coach from Canada. As Olenek now up off the bench for Gonzaga, he'll be checking in, and he grew over an inch in this offseason. Kelly Olenek now a true seven-footer, another for Gonzaga. Well, and during the scrimmage so far, Stephen Gray has been very consistent with his shot. And what I like about his shot right now is his ability to go straight up and straight down. That sometimes last year he started drifting on his shot, and that's when he got some inconsistencies. You're watching the scrimmage at Gonzaga University in Spokane, Washington. It'll continue in a moment. Come on back. It's Midnight Madness at Gonzaga.